Hello everyone and happy Thursday. Welcome into your KLBK Sports Connection. It's been 50 years since Title IX was signed into legislation and today many women in sports are celebrating the past, acknowledging the trailblazers of women's athletics who fought for equality in sports. Just 37 words changed the landscape of women's athletics forever and KLBK Sports sat down with Texas Tech legendary coach Marsha Sharp and discussed the past, present and future of women's athletics. 50 years of Title IX, 1972, June 23rd. Where were you when it was the announcement that it wasn't Title IX was only going to be not just for educational purposes, but also for equality for women's sports as well? Well, I, I had just finished my sophomore year at Wayland Baptist, at that time college, now university. And um, I do remember that there was um, a lot of people who were really excited about that day. Um, there were a couple of times when I was at Wayland when all the women students, I think, ran out into the middle of the, of the university campus, and that was one of them. I think everyone understood at that point how important that day was going to be and how many opportunities it was going to create for women. A lot of schools didn't fully finalize or accept the law until 1988. So That's in right. West Texas, was there, you know, was there a pushback? Did you see immediate change right away? You know, I didn't see so much of a change at Wayland because they were such a unique situation. Uh, the Hutcherson family had really adopted them and they had the flying service, so the Flying Queens had been flying since the 50s on planes to games. They had been giving scholarships to women. They, you know, probably got as the equal or more equal, more than equal time in the gyms with the men's teams and things. So really for me, it wasn't that drastic just because it was already there. Mm -hmm. But I really did know it when I came to Tech and I started coaching here in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, it was law. And yes, there were improvements. And we did have 15 scholarships, but there were still some inequities about, you know, the other things in your budget, yes. um, the way that you were able to go attract kids to come to Lubbock, um, the money you had to spend for that. Mm -hmm. Your salaries were not near what they were on the men's side. And, you know, the gym time was not really that equitable. And it wasn't anything tech didn't do well. It's just that that's the way it was across the country. And um, I honestly can tell you that Texas Tech was really, in the early 80s, a school that was ahead of a lot of the rest of them. From your other colleagues or other female head coaches you know, across the country, did you hear any stories where did they go through something different than y'all did at the time? I think it was hard in, in most communities. and. Um, you know, I think um, it varied a little bit, but I think something that was really, really positive to me and something that I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of was that it really bonded uh, women's athletics from one university to the other all across the country. Like we knew that we had to really make people um, stick to the law. I think something that we were, mo as, at least as, that was at least as important to us mm -hmm was that we were doing it as a group for the national level because we knew that it was going to take all of us to make make it respectable, mm -hmm. you know, for people to really respect women's athletics. Mm -hmm. To you, do you see that moment of winning that 1993 national championship as a win for Title IX and also a good example of and also setting the laying down the foundation for Texas Tech female athletics that moment? I love the way you said that because I think we had worked really hard to make the foundation strong so that when we were able to get a player the caliber of Cheryl Swoops, we were ready for that. We had great players around her. Um, I think we were, we really had an idea of what we needed to do to win and we had, had really stayed pretty steady toward that vision the whole time. And my gosh, I mean, you know, to be able to coach the, I think the best player of a generation and that moment, uh, women's basketball really arrived, not only at Texas Tech, but also in the country. This was the first year that March Madness was branded for the women's tournament. To you, why did it take so long? Is, do you think there's an explanation why it took them this long to brand it as March Madness? You know, the one thing that's been the hardest thing, I think, for women's sports, the hardest hill to climb, has been the corporate sponsorship and money. When I coached here, we we could draw the same amount or more than our men's team. We had more attendance maybe in a lot of cases. We really intentionally cho uh, chose to, to have the same price for men's and women's basketball tickets. For a long time, they were the same. We made the same revenue there. 
but we could never crack the the corporate money that people would advertise with or the NC2A money that people paid for the for the men's tournament. The two pieces that we couldn't get our hands on. They are also at the NC2A level, like right now this summer, trying to decide how to to give some segments of money to women's basketball teams who play deep into the tournament. Uh, when you get those two things involved, not only are schools going to be able to make more money off their women's basketball program, but more people are going to be enticed to, to to engage with their women's basketball program to even pour more money into it because they know the return is there, if that makes sense. To you, there's been a lot that's changed over 50 years, but when you're looking at the next 50 years or so, what's a couple things that you think need to still be addressed or what is the future of Title IX? Well, I think, as I said, it's gonna have to be something that people pay attention to and continue to move forward because it's not gonna move itself forward. And I do think that there has been a really big movement in the last year since all of that information came out about the, the NC2A tournament a year ago um, that is important. And I do think that people are, are more inclined now to try to fix those things. But someone's going to have to continue to point it out, you know, patiently but not too patiently to attempt to, to move all those things forward. I think if we leave it to chance, then that's a mistake, and there will be some opportunities to really impact lives by the corporate money that is put in place and also decisions that the NC2A are making. To me, most all of the things that are going to have to be continually kind of tweaked a little bit are at that highest level. You know, most people in their schools, I mean, you don't ever hear a men's coach now say that, you know, women shouldn't have an opportunity to do this they that's that's I think gone I think people really respect and and want women to have the same opportunities a lot of that came from men Ariel that, that um, you know men who had girls yeah. that you know they wanted the same opportunities for their little girls that their little boys were getting what a great thing you know that now um, a lot of the athletes don't know anything different than that which is great mm -hmm. but at the same time I think it's going to be one of the things that I think we need to do for the next 50 years is continue to educate, to talk about that, that history, to make sure that it's not repeated, you know, that they can continue to move forward and have every opportunity that they can to, to do whatever they want to do. We want to thank Coach Shaw for taking the time to talk about such an important day for women's athletics. Title IX is huge for me personally because without Title IX, I would not have been able to live out my dream as a Division I athlete, being able to row at Alabama and the opportunities I was given there. I'm just super un thankful is an understatement. So I, you know, today is important for not just me, but for everybody in women's athletics. And there was so much we got to talk about with Coach Sharp, you know, that we didn't air tonight. So if you want to see the full 20-minute interview, that will be on our website, everythinglovett.com, after the show. Sounds great. Great job. Job well done. Thanks. Right back.